What was your biggest culture shock? Dutch guy here. When we went to Canada for the first time everything was huge. Big cars on big roads. Big streets and restaurants and malls. I remember we were driving for what seemed like hours through suburbs and I just kept thinking surely after the next turn we're out of the city but the city just seemed to be endless. Kind of scary almost. Also. Distance was huge. In the Netherlands driving from the east to the western end of the country takes 2-3 hours. In Canada. What seemed like an infinitely small distance on the map took 2. 5 hours to drive. My distance relatives who came to Canada. Were blown away. We did a cross country road trip over a week and a half. East coast to west. They loved it. But what surprised me. In fact blew me away. The most. Was how emotional they got driving through the prairies. They had never seen so much open land and sky. They were crying. It gave me a new appreciation for beauty of the vastness of the prairies and those both never ending and yet always vanishing horizons. As they put it. Their culture shock. Was culturally shocking for me as well. Not mine but in college I had a roommate from Australia who was studying abroad in America. We went out to dinner one night and I got mozzarella sticks. He could not believe we just deep fried cheese and then eat it. I was watching an American TV channel and it was showing the scenes around some carnival in some town and my jaw dropped at the food that was being served. It seemed like the only thing that differentiated the various food stands was what was being deep fried at each one. I think they even deep fried a donut. India was my biggest culture shock poverty and extreme riches. Next to each other. It clashes hilariously when the rich try to use their wealthy materialistic possessions on poverty level infrastructure. Your Lamborghini is useless in these pothole filled roads. I moved from Europe to USA. How Americans idolize their politicians. These are public servants. You pay them. Your taxes pay them. They work for you. This is really evident in their movies too. Air Force One. Deep Impact. Independence Day etc etc they're pretty cheesy movie examples but they seriously worship their leader and he's always painted in such a heroic way. But WTF. He's just a politician. Who cares? My dad was a US diplomat so we moved to a new country every 3 years or so. I had never lived in the states, born in Portugal, and 4 countries later when my dad decided to retire. We moved to the US, Maryland. Being in America was the biggest shock. From the safeness I felt. To the way people were. Yellow school buses. Everyone sort of being the same. It was a shock. Among many other things. I felt American my whole life living abroad. Being associated with the American Embassy. Hanging out at the Marine Club houses. And when I moved to the US. I did not feel very American at all. Women in bikinis at the beach water park. Just that amount of clothlessness was like hardcore porn to kid me. On the opposite. So many people bathing in t-shirts and pants in the US. Where I'm from. It's normal for women to be topless at the beach. More like workplace culture. But it was quite a shock when I got a new job. I was sure that adults would act like adults. But instead it was more like high school. People having their own cliques. Always blaming others for their mistakes. Almost no one taking any responsibility. I'm still quite shocked. I can't believe people actually think they can be taken seriously when they deflect responsibility all the time and act like big children. And still somehow they seem to hang on to their jobs. My dad's friend once told me that the real world isn't like college. It's like high school with money. He was right. Well. Half right. America has drive through everything. drive through coffee. drive through ATM. drive through liquor store. Canadian working in New Zealand. Birds indoors. This may seem minor but it was so weird to see. When I got off the plane in Auckland there were birds flying around inside the airport. In Canada if a bird gets inside everyone takes notice. Some people even freak out. If it doesn't fly away on its own. Animal control is called. In NZ nobody gave a shti about all these little birds zooming around inside the airport. 
I sat there watching these guys in complete amazement. This was just my first observation. NZ got progressively weirder as time went on. I know it sounds ridiculous. But my biggest culture shock is hugs and kisses. I grew up in a family who doesn't show love through such means. The very first time I was hugged and kissed by someone. I literally froze and had absolute no clue on how to react. My fiancé is the same way. He grew up in a family that wasn't very close and so being around my family and the way I interact with them was a culture shock to him. People can marry whoever they like regardless of family, creed, religion. Like white people can just fall in love with another person and just marry them without any issue. I'm beyond amazed. When I was 20 I moved to Newcastle, Australia to study, spoiler alert I didn't study. At all. But before I went there I was told that in Australia they spoke English. Spoiler alert they didn't. At all. Every single word is abbreviated. Everything is different. Everything has its own vernacular. Example. Me. Hey Shane. I'm going to McDonald's. You want me to get you a breakfast burrito? Double quote. Shane. Oh I'm Akka's fair dinkum mate. Had to ruck up early for the physio and me ute was out of petrol so stopped at the servo and asked the Sheila if they had brekkie but knew we are just lollies so I've been getting aggro. Me. Dude. None of the sounds that just fell out of your head were words. Do you want a breakfast burrito or not? Went to the states for college at Indiana. I lived in Tokyo. Japan my whole life before this. First day. I went to the gas station to buy something. I had a lot of $100 bills with me cause I didn't have a card yet. The cashier literally told me you shouldn't carry that much bill around. If I saw you with that on the street. I would rob you. I was like okay. Thanks for letting me know. Double quote. This was like 6 years ago and in Japan. People normally carry use cash for a lot of things back then. I knew and saw PPL having $500. 50. 000 yen plus in their wallet on a normal given day it's getting better now and it's becoming more cashless but holy shit didn't think carrying large bills would be that risky lol my cousin visited me from nigeria and couldn't wrap her mind around the fact that we have entire stores here just for pets and pet products in nigeria most of the dogs are allowed to just run wild my former co-worker was also from nigeria and she had a hard time wrapping her mind around the fact that we allow pets to sleep in our beds with us. I have no idea what area city she's from originally within Nigeria and this was also a long time ago. But she said doing so back there would have been considered disgusting and weird. Then she got a roommate who had a dog and fell in love with it. Last conversation I remember having with her. She was talking about how she was curled up in bed on a Saturday with all of her dogs. Just how late the Spanish eat dinner. Totally respect it. But I was hungry at 6pm and was shocked no restaurant was open to serve at that time. I stayed with the family in Argentina for a few months. Dinner is also late. But they had an additional meal called tea. With sandwiches at about 4pm. And the food was plentiful and superb. Often. There were two main course dishes. E. G. Meat and fish. The homemade empanadas were memorably good. Grocery stores in the US. The amount of food getting wasted has to be insane. And then the reverse culture shock moving back to Europe. FFS people. Talking and being nice to strangers doesn't cost anything. I'm American but I live in the UK now. Making eye contact with a stranger is a crime here. Edit. Sorry guys I didn't mean to generalize. I live in the Southampton area and I must be real f-king ugly or something. When I went to Dominican Republic. My family and I saw a guy literally go behind a bush. Put his pants down and take a dump. One of the locals told us that this was a common thing there. I saw a Chinese tourist in the Philippines holding her baby over a flower pot to let it go poo. Right above her head was a sign with an arrow pointing to the toilet. I live in the US and visited my friend in South Africa, his family is Indian. They had a maid, which was odd to me but not that odd, 
but it really weirded me out when his dad randomly remarked I could use some dessert and my friend's brother's girlfriend immediately stood up. Walked to the kitchen. And made a full dessert right then and there. The only thing that really shocked me in France was how casual people talked about taboo subjects. I mostly had a huge culture shock when I came back from France. Caused me to be pretty depressed for a year. I went to Spain in 2018. I'm American. I caught a Rua game with some friends in this city called Alicante. What really caught me off guard was that people are allowed to smoke in the seats. Over here in the US. Smoking is only allowed in designated areas of the stadiums for any sport. Two older men were seated in front of me smoking while this 10 year old in between them just breathed in the smoke as it collected in front of his face. He wasn't even bothered by it. I loved my time in Spain but that was just unexpected. Edit. In case you're wondering. I was there to train with a UA team. We had people from around the world that came. Mostly Americans and Brits. We also had a Hungarian. Couple Australians. An Italian. And a Moldovan attended the game during our day off. The team we watched is Hercules. That Americans don't have electric kettles. Or that I need to say electric kettle because if I didn't people would say they have stovetop kettles. In the commonwealth countries a kettle is just a standard item for the house. I don't drink coffee or tea and still own a kettle. You can get the. For like $10 and they'll still be decent. Moving back to the USA I had reverse culture shock. How large our portions are. How fat we are. How high our standard of living is with such an incredibly low quality of life. The massive income inequality. The amount of homeless. The magnitude of our selfishness. How little we discuss art and science. And how we discuss things in a very competitive way so that there needs to be a winner or a loser in every discussion instead of finding common ground. Moving overseas I had culture shock too but there's something about reverse culture shock that is much more difficult. I still haven't been able to fully adjust. Once you see how others live it's difficult to accept some of the things I mentioned above. Culture shock at getting 2 months of vacation isn't that hard to get used to. Expat communities can negate most of them in other countries. How easy it is to buy electronics and vehicles in North America. I moved to Canada from South Africa for 2 years and it's amazing how much cheaper stuff like that is without the endless amount of taxes and inflation South Africa has. I can buy a good car for 10k in dollars in Canada. But if you convert that to South Africa you are getting a rusty old Ford Ranger with more than 400 kkm on it. And then electronics as well. I can buy a drone in Canada for $600. In South Africa ITLB $1500 converted. I was in an airport in Europe and saw two guys walking around with huge automatic weapons and I seriously thought we were all gonna die. Turned out they were military security. This was one of the things I remember being surprised by on my trip to Europe. I'm American. And live in Kansas. You'd think I'd be more comfortable and less surprised than almost anyone to see people with guns. But getting off the plane in Europe and walking into the terminal to see a line of dudes with rifles was pretty wild. Witnessing PDA everywhere and frequently in France. I'm from a little conservative Asian country. Here couples rarely do it and when it happens it's just hand holding. I'm from the Philippines and I lived for at least a year in the USA and I was so shocked people in the US would. Just greet and help strangers out if they needed help. Here in the Philippines if someone you didn't know greeted you and talked to you out of nowhere. We'd be weirded out. Also the usage of a fork in eating a meal especially. W rice. Why are you guys just using a fork? When you could both use a spoon and a fork. Don't even get me started on the public transco. It's so. Organized? I'm still amazed w how the buses work in the states w their organized schedules. And the minimum wage pay. Before I was confused why it was only $13. 5. Where I used to work. HR and now I totally got it and comparing it here. Americans have it way easier. I was astounded to how much money I could save W just a minimum wage pay. Small town. Deeply conservative America. Holy FCK. They are panicked by change. 
my wife's family in the community just doesn't change anything. I think I've had one of six meals in the nine. Five years I've been visiting them. And gone to one of two restaurants. Both of them Chinese buffets, of which Phil is deeply annoyed about anyone non-white eating there. Hasn't said anything about the staff yet. Comma diversity to the means Catholic or Lutheran. And they're way too comfortable with the idea that George Floyd probably did something to deserve it. It would be sad if it wasn't so scary. Had a business trip to rural Alabama as a fresh college grad. I'm Canadian and had never left Canada at that point. The blatant. Overt racism I found there was absolutely shocking. This was like 20 years ago. No idea if things have changed since. I remember thinking that if I wasn't white I would be in legit danger most of the time I was there. We took our client out to dinner and he asked the host to make sure we weren't gonna be served by a black person. Like it was a casual request no different from asking to sit by a window. On racism in the US. We were taught in school that basically the North won the Civil War. Then MLK came along. Thus ending racism in America forever. Boy was that trip a rude awakening. How big people from Europe are. Especially Dutch and Danes. I remember growing up with the big bad Americans belief. Yay. Northerners are tall. You probably were thinking of Western Europeans, French, Brits, Irish, Spanish. Fun fact. In World War 1 when Anzacs, Canadians, and Americans took over Western Europeans trenches they took disproportionate head wounds until they dug the trenches deeper. Reason being is that Anzacs, Canadians, and Americans had more meat in their childhood diets and were 2-3 inches taller on average. Going to my wife's country then coming back home to America and realizing just how any and selfish Americans are. Once you go somewhere else. You come home and see things differently. This. My American in-laws complained so much. Ugh. Once we had Thanksgiving dinner at the Four Seasons Buffet in Atlanta. And it was the most lavish. Luxury food I have seen and they complained about the food. They sent the wine back. They bring up politics. OMG they ruined the whole thing again they always do that. I grew up poor so I like to enjoy my dream American moments so I hate their whiny attitude. Why can't they shut the FCK up and enjoy champagne and four seasons? I don't know what's wrong with these PPL. So glad I don't have to travel to see them this year. Was visiting family in Las Vegas. Went to Costco and there was a sub in the parking lot with a personalized license plate that just said Aryan. Also, the Costco sold gun safes, which was a new one for me as well. Oh, the way some Aussies do their dishes aka drawing a bath, poking the dishes in, scrubbing individually in the bath, and then taking it out to drip dry, without rinsing. Growing up in my culture we rinse post washing liquid scrub. Edit. Sorry I did not mean to generalize all Aussies. Perhaps just the ones I've met who has done it this way. So I've changed it to some. I'm American and had never left the country. California before and traveled to Japan. I was seeing kids so often travel by themselves. And leaving their bags places like at seats when went to go order food etc. Without a worry of anyone stealing it. It was very surprising but also gave me a sense of safety I have never felt in the US. Edit. And the no free refills. Colon. Open bracket. Not crazy cultural but. In California. We have squirrels everywhere. Running around. Climbing trees. Getting run over. We went to Puto Rico for our honeymoon. Where literal f king iguanas serve the same role. I've always been into reptiles and that was really cool. When my mother moved to America from South Africa. She asked the taxi driver taking her to where she was staying what information he had about the area. She tells me that she'll always remember how he pointed out an area and said it was the poorest in the city. Super dangerous. It made her realize that America has a very different perception of poverty than Saar. Here. The poor have four solid walls. HVAC. And probably phones. In Saar. The poor have small sheet metal sheds. No water. No plumbing. No internet. And no electricity. 
Look up Texas Homecoming Mum. Then imagine growing up thinking that every high school in America did that for homecoming. The first time I learned that people outside of Texas didn't do it. I was thinking. Hugh boy I hope these out of staters don't see our homecoming games lol. I studied 8th grade in Saudi Arabia. One time. I was waiting for my school bus outside the apartment building. 10 minutes or so passed and I got bored so I decided to remove my abaya. I was wearing only a t-shirt and pants when the bus arrived. The teachers had a terrified look on their faces. I didn't know. I could go to jail for not wearing an abaya. Waiting for everyone to have their food before I start eating. Didn't have much to eat when I was little. So I was constantly hungry. Now my friends make me feel bad when we go out to eat because I start as soon as I get my food. The norm at most medium to higher end restaurants in the US is for all dishes from each course to come out together. I've never worked in such a kitchen. But I was a server at such a restaurant way back when. And the skill involved in managing and expediting all of that is quite impressive. On busy Friday and Saturday nights. The chef de cuisine didn't get even cook, just stood on the expo line managing the timing of everything. Turkish person who lived in Germany for 5 years. Germany gives immense importance to order and being precise. If you follow the rules. You'll live in harmony. When I came back to Turkey. That wasn't the case. Everything was chaotic and you needed luck and acquaintances to survive. Life is definitely harder in Turkey than it is in Germany. But that doesn't mean I don't like Turkey. We just have a bad system. One more thing. The sidewalks are closer to the ground in Germany and are high as hell Turkey.